Okay. Uh, so hi everyone. You know, thanks for taking the time to meet with us today. Uh, my name's Kit McManus. I'm the assistant systems engineer for the NASA Socioeconomic Data and Applications Center, or NASA CDAC. Uh, I'm also the the PI on this project, which is the, the Science Core Heuristics for Open Source Outcomes and Learning, or the, the school project. Uh, I've been a, a GIS developer for almost eight, going on 18 years now. Uh, a lot of my work is focused on building geographic spatial data sets. You know, um, at, the, at CDAC, our mission is to put socioeconomic data into formats that is interoperable with things like satellite data and other, other research data that the other NASA institutions generally rely on. Uh, so I've done a lot of data set production. I've done a lot of tool production as well. Uh, you know, my background is actually in environmental science and policy. Uh, so, so when people ask me about my career, I tend to say that a big arc of it has been in decision support system development. Uh, so I've done some front end work there using JavaScript and Python to, to work with local municipalities to do things like m measure potential future flood impacts, uh, you know, given climate change or given storms of different intensities. Uh, so that's who I am. I just want to hand it over to Juan so he can introduce himself as well. well. Hello, everybody. I think I've met most of you already. So um, uh, just to uh, reiterate, I'm Juan Martinez. I'm a senior research assistant at CSEN, which is a research center at Columbia University. And I'm also part of the school project, which I discussed with you um, last time we met. Um, uh, just a quick thing, just for today, um, we'll be I'll be showing you a demo of how to do Quarto, how to how to create a Quarto document, and how to publish it on GitHub. Um, so, if uh, after that, if maybe Druvo, if you have a chance to show us or explain to us whatever ability you have right now uh to either talk about or demonstrate you know how to how do how you did the uh the pull request and the push requests um because i felt that that was a smooth way to uh, provide feedback and so if you can show us you know your workflow or um i would appreciate it um but that would be at the end of the of the meeting of course hey okay. yeah thanks juan uh so I just want to take a few minutes before we, we dive into the, the more interactive part of the meeting, just to, to say something about the project as a whole. Uh, so, you know, I understand that all you folks have taken OS 101, uh, you know, with Dr. Tovar in summer school in some fashion. Uh, that's great. Uh, the school project is is part of a following on effort, effort to OS 101 that's called Science Core. Uh, so the Science Core, whereas OS 101 was a general curriculum about open science, Science Core is specific to a variety of different domains. Uh, so there are ten different funded projects. You know, some of them are on on solar data. There, there's other ones that are you know specifically on topics like tri tribal data. Uh, our school project is on the earth science themes. So, you know, within NASA, there's an earth science division and the earth science division has a, several different themes that they work within. Uh, you know, one of them is, is water resources. Another one is health and air quality. Another one is disasters and wildfires environmental justice, climate, agriculture, and then, you know, population and infrastructure is part of the equation that, that CDAC brings in. Uh, so, you know, our philosophy towards teaching is, is one of inclusion. If you took OS 101, you've heard, heard a lot about in 
how inclusion is an important part of open science. Uh, what it means to us is that we, we want to use use cases that, that make sense to folks. We don't want to get lost in scientific jargon and, you know, create something that, that might be a great demonstration of a use case, but doesn't really mean a lot to folks on the ground. Uh, so through inclusive teaching and, you know, by in, in encouraging diverse points of view while we're developing the curriculum, we're hoping to, to achieve that goal of ha having lessons that are representative of the type of folks that, you know, will be looking at them and learning about these different domains. Uh, active learning is part of the pedagogy as well. Uh, so active learning, you know, it, it asks us to move beyond just, just reading text on the screen and to, you know, stop and think and ask ourselves questions. Uh, so I just wonder, is anyone, can you think of a time when you've participated in active learning and would anyone just like to, to briefly share their experience with that? The next phase is calling on people. <laughs> yeah, so I, I have one one story of mine. So when I started of uh, like um, getting into programming, so that was something that I really struggled with because I didn't have any programming background. So the the guy who taught me like how to get into programming was like not by you know just like step by step as in oh, you do this you do that, but he was like oh just see a real world example you know. There are people that are different types of people. So like, you know, there's one structure, there's like man, there's women. Now it's like the same form, but like, you know, it manifests in different styles. So like, you know, he was basically breaking down the concepts of like the object oriented the program into so the polymorphism, abstraction and all those things in like in, in a real world scenario. So it was not just like programming, but like, uh, like, you know, how you see the world. So that was like, that, that kind of expanded the view, like how you're supposed to think and like how, the programming challenges or like the coding problems or like can be solved just using understanding of like you know the surrounding which is out there that was one experience that i learned yeah thank you for sharing that uh that that's exactly right you know it, it part part of it in in an active learning environment is that you you, you want to meet people where they are so you know in geographic theory we have this idea of of space and place right so it space is purely a quantitative thing you know it's an abstract thing that you can you can measure uh you can add it up but it it, it really it's in the realm of quantitative reasoning whereas that the, the idea of place is more of a qualitative idea so you know for instance the if if you think of the the country of poland uh you know over the years the border of poland has shifted many different times so we could say in in terms of space poland has become a different country over and over and over however if you talk to someone who who's lived there and you say what what is poland they're going to talk about their cultural heritage they're going to talk about you know the the weather maybe like all of these these idiosyncratic things about what the place of poland actually is so, so when it comes to teaching someone and learning, if you can meet them at, at the qualitative aspects of place, you know, where they already have an established understanding, then you're able to, to, to push, the, push the ball further and to learn in new directions, you know, with everyone coming from the same, same place. Uh, so those are kind of like the aspirations that we have for the project. Uh, you know, in, pro in our proposal, you know, how, how, do, we, how do we want to do this? Uh, we do it through through teaching people about a little bit about coding. It's not it's not our emphasis. We're using code and we're getting people to work with it. Uh, but our emphasis really is on the data science life cycle, which is like you, as we see here, you know, in step one of the data science life cycle, you generate or you collect some data. In step two, you're going to figure out how do you process it and storage it. Then it, you're going to do some analysis on it visualize and interpret the results you know oftentimes in 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 practice you get to step four and it pushes you back into step one because it kind of it reveals some new question or you maybe need to modify your analysis a little bit uh but it, 
at the end of the day, this iterative process, it, it, it eventually leads to a point where we can practice community engagement and open science or support decision making, which, as I mentioned, has been been the crux of my career. Uh, so we look at these different NASA data streams across all of those different themes. Uh, and then I, I think many of you have seen this already, so I won't spend too much time on it. But in in practice, where the rubber meets the road, we implement it through the production of you know either Python or R based Jupyter books, and Jupyter notebooks, Quarto notebooks, uh, and uh, we're walking people through for these different data streams that that whole life cycle. I think in practice that the project morphed a little bit from how it was proposed. You know, it it was proposed as I mentioned before to be these five 30 minute lessons. But what we came to realize and, you know, hearing from from other subject matter experts and open science team members uh, was that really every time you pick up a new data stream, it's useful to demonstrate that whole life cycle. And then in teaching repetition or in any type of training, repetition is or leads to mastery. So we've taken the approach that for each data stream, we kind of repeat the whole data science life cycle. So even within one module, each lesson is going to show multiple instances of that data science life cycle. Uh, this is just an example from the water module. We, you know, again, our intention is not to teach people about the theme. It's about to get them interested in how they can apply data from NASA to a theme to answer some question. But that being said, we do provide some just background knowledge about the thematic content. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of this, but, you know, ultimately we start pulling in some packages, accessing some data, produce some maps, or, you know, by the, by the end of this lesson, we've analyzed, you know, for California, we're looking month by month of what percentage of the total population is under different intensities of drought. So we see, you know, in this year, 2014, almost the whole state was in a drought in January, but by April, it was far fewer people that were in a very intense drought. Uh, so, that, so that's kind of the, the, the big picture of the project. Then to, to, to get more specific, you know, just a couple of weeks ago, we, we had an, an internal meeting with our development team to try to figure out, you know, where are we going with the remainder of this work? Uh, at, at this point, we, ha we have a water module and then we're, we're you know, maybe 50% into a health and air quality module. But by the end of the project, we're also going to add climate, agriculture, disasters and wildfires. And throughout all of these, we're going to do pop in infrastructure and environmental justice use cases. So we, you know, we created this matrix of different data sets. And then uh, over here on the right side of the image, we, we looked at, you know, what, what are our, our considerations and, you know, what, what things do we want to make sure we cover across the, the whole of the project? You know, we want people to be able to work with either spatial or tabular data. So we'll have use cases that use both. Uh, we want them to know about time series, but also be able to work with things that are just a single slice in time or whether there's multiple variables or, you know, f flat type GIS files that you often find. We're going to teach a little Python, a little R. We're going to teach some things that are cloud native and some things that are local. Like the idea that in, in the future of computing, there'll be, you know, edge computing and cloud computing will be working together. Uh, and then in, in some cases we'll be providing code, whereas in other places we'll be providing applications it, it, kind of to lower the barrier for, for people who, who, you know, have never seen code before. Let's go meet them where they are, talk about some data and then introduce some code. Uh, so here, I'm not gonna go through all of these data sets, but we, we just went through an exercise of, is the data set a local, a regional or global? Is it in the past, is this the present, or is there future projections? Uh, so in, in geography, we have the concept of scale. And, you know, mo most of our team, we have geography backgrounds in one way or another. 
So, so we're embedding at, at a high level this idea of different scales, either in time or in space. And we, we want to, at the end of the day, have examples of each quadrant in here. Um, overarching everything is this idea of fitness for use. So, you know, what, what we, I've been an applied scientist for, for a long time. And one of the things that, uh, you know, can drive, be maddening at times is that people will, will pick up a data set that, you know, maybe was marketed well, but it, it, it's not necessarily the one that they should use for the question they're trying to answer. Uh, so we're trying to get people to understand, first of all, that they need to pick the right data for to answer certain questions. It needs to be a research question driven thing. Uh, and then it would give them some pointers about what data is fit for what kinds of uses. Um, I mentioned the data science life cycle. Uh, there's this idea that, as I was just saying, things should be driven by a question. Uh, to the extent that we can personalize, again, meeting people where they are, we want to do that. And then uh, throughout it all, although we're not directly teaching the general open science like OS 101 does, we're trying to uh, walk the walk and use open science in what we're teaching. Uh, so please, uh, you know, if, if, if a question comes up at any time, feel, feel free to stop me. Uh, and I, I know Juan, Juan is sweating that I'm taking too long. <laughs> I'm, I'm not very good at lightning talks. Like I, I can talk for three or four hours easily, but five, five or 10 minutes is hard. <laughs> uh, so, you know, another thing that we did in this internal meeting that I wanted to make you guys all aware of for what our, we have this tentative roadmap of where the project is headed, uh, which, you know, you have to be adaptable. So the, the roadmap, it, it can it can change over time as new things come up. But we have a basic idea for the next year of, of what we're going to focus, who's going to work on what, what programming languages are we going to use? You know, is there a data set that can help support that? And I, again, I, I don't want to go th through all of this, but I, I, I will share these images in the chat once, once Juan starts talking, in case you want to look more carefully at them. Uh, but, you know, our, our approach is that the project is going to produce nine core lessons in the next year. And then we want to, uh, you know, put in place a protocol for people to be able to make community driven contributions. And I, and I think that's where you guys have the opportunity to, to really help us a lot. And, you know, to, how, how can we implement a proper framework so that, that the community can continue to uh, grow this project so that, that, you know, teachers may be able to pick pieces of lessons and incorporating them into their classes. Uh, in, in a lot of these projects, say, you know, including ones that produce decision support applications, uh, there, there's a challenge in the funding life cycle that, you know, these projects, they're two years, three years, five years, it, it, eventually the, the funding runs out. And when the funding runs out, if there's not a strong community, if you've not developed a strong community, the project may fade away after, you know, it will probably be online for a couple of years, but it, it, it may fade away. And, it, you know, certainly that, that's not the intention of open science, right? Like, you know, the reason why we're doing something out in the open is so we can, you know, there's the saying standing on the shoulders of giants, you know, we, we want to put this, this piece of clay out there and then people can branch it and mold it and make it better and use it in ways that we didn't expect. Uh, so, you know, you, you guys are a quorum that are, are doing that for us in real time. So, you know, I'm very, very, very appreciative of that. Uh, also we're thinking about how can we enable other people to continue to do this, you know, even beyond the end of the project. Uh, so that's, that's the big picture, 20,000 foot point of view. Uh, is there any questions or, you know, I still do it, even though I know it's, <laughs> it doesn't always work. If you say, 
here's a specific question for a specific person. They always answer. <laughs> if you say, are there any questions? People are like, oh, I, I don't know. Uh, but feel free to put them in the chat as well. I think that in our, in our remote world, uh, that's a way to be more accessible for people who, who maybe feel shy to speak up. Dr. Tovar, do you have a question? I, I, I actually have a, um, a lot of comments, but I'll, I'll, uh, I'll wait. But one of the, uh, the uh, things that we're trying to do, and we, we spoke uh, to this uh, last week, uh, Juan and Kate, and also I met with, you know, a subgroup of this team here to, to, to get the strategic approach of how we're going to do this, right? And by the way, we didn't know this, the way you're showing us on these images, right, which is very helpful. Uh, and obviously, I have a lot of questions on that, but we can delay that a little later. Uh, but the idea is this, is how do we provide um, uh, a framework, right? The framework that's going to allow us to, to be very agile, right? And I know we spoke about sprints, right? Hey, we have this particular uh, uh, a group of people that are going to be doing this particular lesson, right? And again, uh, you remember, we have uh, this group here and in, in, in a couple of months, a lot of them are not going to be here, right? So we need to start thinking about how do we uh, use their time the, the most efficient way possible, right? We can say, okay, you know, we're happy to have you. Uh, this is this is the need that we that we have. Can you jump right into it, right? And obviously, we'll, we'll coordinate with the leads, say, hey, this is what's happening because we don't want everybody working on the same thing, right? We want to be able to have a group working on this particular task and then another group uh, working on a different task. And I think it's incumbent on us to come up with a strategic approach and plan to, to do that. And I have Akshay, uh, Alex, and Drew that are working on this. Uh, they're trying to figure out how to best approach this. So you have the big picture, right? We're trying to figure out the, the mechanics of it underneath it to say, okay, how do we make it a, as a framework? And you know, we spoke about this kit uh, last week so that it can be implementable time and time and time and time again. As people come in and you know they jump into the project, you jump off and so on and so forth until until like you said until we have a three five year <laughs> lapse time that just expired and we can say we have a community, we have a process, and we have a vision, right? We just need to publish. Yeah, it, right? yeah, 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 absolutely. And I I, I guess I, I I should say again like in the big picture point of view, you know, some of the work that goes into developing these things, it's thematic in nature. It's like, you know, doing literature reviews, looking at the state of uh, the field in water resources or health and air quality and providing, you know, at least uh, a couple thousand words for people to set the set the framework of what what we're dealing with. Then, uh, you know, another component of this work is is the development side where we're writing code, uh, you know, doing code reviews, uh, things that traditionally you see in a sprint framework. Uh, and then, the, you know, the, I think the, the, the third component of this is what we've been alluding to, is like helping to build up the community and, uh, you know, support uh, use cases that matter, I guess is a good way to put it. Uh, so it, it, there, there, there are, there's some need for work on the side of people who are producing text-based content. There, there's work on the side of producing code-based content. And then, the, you know, also, I guess that the platform technology itself, there are, there are a lot of options out there now. We've been very lucky to be supported by 2i2c, but there's also things like GitHub Code Spaces, Google Colab, Google Earth Engine. There's so, there's so many different platforms that, in, in an ideal world, we within this project we could have lessons that expose people to all sorts of different platforms. Uh, so there 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 is that systems architecture component to, you know, as you're describing, making a plan that is repeatable and digestible. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. So that's, that's the overall uh, sort of, you know, uh, big picture that you just provided. Uh, again, our plan on this side, and, and those are uh, contributions that I hope, uh, you know, uh, the team over here can provide and can say, hey, 
uh, we came out with this, you know, start of a process. That doesn't mean that it's going to need, it's going to evolve, right? It's a process that will evolve as, as new things come up, as new new uh, uh, contributors jump on board, and we need to think about some other aspect of, of the process. So the idea is to start uh, uh, figuring that out. It's, it's, it's a very high level project management uh, sort of activity, right? Where, where the first thing we want to do, and, and we talk about this, um, is we need to get an idea of skill set of everyone, right? So uh, actually, Alex and Drew are working on a, on, a, on a sort of a questionnaire type of thing. There's a people who say, hey, what, what's, what kind of skills do you have? And it's not that like we're we're asking you to give you a grade. We're asking you so we can give you, we can provide something. So we can we'll have the skill sets available with the uh, the, the person who has the skill set, and then we can say, hey Juan, kid, <laughs> we have these skill sets. You know, where do you need help? Right, and then Juan can go. You can go. Hey, we have this thing that's happening. Okay, let's let's, let's start uh, talking about this. You know, uh, Juan sent an email about hey. We have an opportunity to do some some uh, a literature review, you know, and ideas, right? So we need to know all those things. Uh, and as we as we get somebody on board, that person wants to say, okay, great, great to have you. Thank you so much. Do you fill this this questionnaire for us so we can give you the, the the right task? And that doesn't mean, like you said, right? That, that doesn't mean that people will not have the opportunity to learn other stuff, right? Because they can a uh, uh, tag team with somebody that knows coding or, or Python or R or whatever, and they can say, hey, I'll develop the code you tested. And in testing the code and looking at the code, they'll be able to learn in the process, right? It's like you were saying, we, we need to meet people where they are, but also we need to give them opportunities to, to you know, to kind of get more knowledge. And one of those things, at least in this project, is to, hey, you, you know, now, you know, now you know about open science, Let's put it in practice, like you said, right? Let's put it in practice. Let's walk the talk. And that way, in, in the same process, you'll start learning and implementing those ideas. And, and you can speak to them in the future. Say, you know what? I worked on this. And this is the, uh, this is sort of the uh, 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 framework we're working under. And this is all the work that we did, right? And, yes. and you know, I want everybody who's part of the group to say, I got some benefit out of it, right? Not in terms, hey, uh, uh, I, I was just part of it, but hey, I, I didn't know Python. I, I get a little bit better about Python. I had never seen R. I, I run some of this stuff, and now I kind of understand it. Those are the things that, we're, that I'm hoping everybody's here for, to be part of a, of a, of a bigger thing and also learn in the process. Yes, no, I, I I couldn't agree more. Uh, and, you know, I, I should also say that, you know, part, part of the reason that we're recording the meeting today is that we're practicing open science right now and you know with everyone's permission at the end of the meeting we'll create a zenodo entry for this we'll list everyone here as authors and then all of a sudden you have something on your resume that you've been an author on this nasa project and you know hopefully that can help to pro you know open doors for you in certain ways and then i think also you know, Juan and myself and uh, the rest of our team members as well, we're, we're very interested to getting to know you and to, to helping to provide whatever opportunities that, that we can as well. We're very thankful that, you know, you're, you're spending your valuable time with us to, to help improve this, what hopefully will be, will really be a public good. I, I uh, think, so, yeah, I, I think it will be. I think it, it already is. Kate, think about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I know, I know. Juan told me not to take too much time, and now, now I've taken the half hour. But uh, Juan, let me hand it over to you. And I'm sorry if I squished in the time too much. No, no, that's all right. Uh, thank you, Kit. Uh, and I just wanted to uh, reiterate what Dr. Tor said that. You know, in our second module, we we did identify uh, an area where we need some help with a literature review. Uh, and the second module is about air quality. So I know that a lot of you are, you know, focused on computer science. But if, if you're interested in learning a little bit more about air quality and doing some literature review, uh, that will then be implemented into the module. Um, and so the 
data science component or could come from uh, implementing that literature review into the pages that are, are public facing and that use these kind of um, technologies that, that we were discussing, uh, one of which or a few of which I'll demonstrate today. Uh, so if you're interested in that uh, with regards to the air quality literature review, please send me an email. Um, I know all of you have my email, so just send me an email if you're interested in that and I can give you more information. Can I interject a little bit, uh, Juan? Just, just, yeah, of course. Just, just to clarify, uh, if you don't know what a literature review is, it's just research to support your idea, right? Your research questions. That's, you know, we're trying to figure out what's out there already to support the research, the code that is in that lesson. And you guys have done this already, by the way. Uh, all of you have done this. So it's just don't research to support, you know, that what you're saying is happening, right? That's called the literature review. Just research. Just wanted to clarify that. That's correct. Yeah. And of, and of course, just to add some more detail to it. You know, we'll, we'll, of course, we'll be trying to focus on on peer review research, uh, and usually this research will often inform uh, the areas of interest for the code. Uh, you know, what what is the what is the research question that we're trying to answer with the data? So uh, we'll provide some some already background on the data sets that that we have prepared for for this lesson. Uh, so it will be a lot of more, as Dr. Tovar mentioned, uh, supporting research to then kind of weave a narrative and a, and a purpose uh, for the code and, and for the lesson. Uh, so those two components, the, the narrative aspect, the research, the literature review aspect and the code are, are kind of two key uh, parts of the lesson that guide each other. Um, so. Okay, so in that case, I will, if there nobody has any questions, um, I will start with the lesson. Just gonna share my screen. Okay, can everybody see? Uh, we have Visual Studio Code open which is a kind of an application that you can download on your computer. Uh, Visual Studio Code is an IDE, uh, which is kind of like a, a front-facing application that, that lets you uh, do all kinds of uh, coding, uh, write code, and also interact with GitHub and interact with other platforms. Um, so, I, I personally, I'm, I'm sure there's a variety of them, but today I'll, I'll be using Visual Studio Code. It's just a personal preference, but I'm sure there are other ones out there. Uh, I like Visual Studio Code because it uh, it easily connects with GitHub and you can install extensions that connect with, you know, uh, a GitHub AI or connect, uh, can write and read Python and Quarto and, um, R. Uh, so today we'll be using a little bit of Quarto um, as well as R to, to do some publishing. So, and this is essentially how we published all of these modules and all of these learning modules to, to GitHub. And these are all the pages that I've shared with you. Um, and so I'll show you today how, how you can put those online and how you can share these links with, with your community, whatever whatever it is that you're you're writing about or publishing about. So in the back here, we have you know if if we have a, a repo or this is like a GitHub account. Um, I don't, I'm sure you're familiar, but I think it's it's free if you you can join that you can make create your own personal account. Um, but this is the this is our season account which is for, for the research center that we work at from out of Columbia. And so the first thing I want to do or is, you know, you create a, your own template. Uh, so, you know, just let's call it demo one because I already, I was testing this a little earlier. 
Uh, so just be like a you know, demo of Quarto. Uh, we'll make it public. Uh, add a readme just so people know what it is. And then uh, this is a general public license. I think it's kind of like a Creative Commons kind of license. So, you know, the Creative Commons means you're open to sh to use it. Uh, just provide uh, a reference or or provide credit. I believe I'm sure there's more to it than than that. And you can Google Creative Commons license, and and it'll give you more information about what kind of uh, open science or open licenses there are. All right. So now we have our um, repo created. And the repo gives you a URL. So we'll copy that one. And then we'll come back here into Visual Studio Code. Uh, Visual Studio Code gives you this uh, clone ability to clone repositories. So that's what we'll get started with. Uh, and it provides, it asks you for a URL, which is the one that I just copied. So we'll just put this one here. And then it'll ask you, where do you want to put this? Because uh, it's going to clone it. So I created already a little, oh, where did I put that? Sorry. Um, here we go. So I'll put it in my demo folder. And we'll open it. And now you see that uh, in our folder, we have a license and a readme that were cloned out of out of the GitHub repo. Uh, let's see if we right click here, uh, we can review in the file explorer and you can see that demo one was copied into the folder that I chose and it brought in these two um, files, which if we go back here are the same files that we have here. So, now that I'm connected, um, usually once you start uh, Visual Studio Code, you go to the extensions and you install, you know, GitHub. You can sign into GitHub with your account. Um, they also have other extensions for Python and R. Uh, so oftentimes, you know, you'll want to set some environments. Um, but I think once you install R, because we're we're using Quarto. Uh, it should be fine as long as you install this extension. <clears throat> and, you know, since it's a live demo, we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, so we'll go here and we'll create a new um, file. And this one we call demo one. And since we're talking about Quarto files, Quartos have an extension called QMD. You can see here that the icon already changed to this to this kind of circle with a cross. And that's the Quarto um, logo. And Quarto is, is pretty much like an updated version of our markdown. Um, so it has some capabilities that are that are pretty pretty interesting, especially if you're publishing um, you know content on on GitHub pages, which is what we'll do um, because it, it allows you a lot of um, ability to customize your page and and customize how your page looks. Um, so this is kind of the um, the the place where we'll write our code is is the Quarto Markdown code uh, file, and out of this file, uh, once you have Quarto installed on your computer, uh, it should generate an HTML page in a in another in a separate file, uh, folder, uh, and then once we upload all of this into GitHub we'll set up GitHub so that it points to that rendered HTML page. And I'll, and I'll show you a little bit of as we go along. <clears throat> um, but the first thing you want to do when you have a Quartzo page is um, kind of tell it that it's a Quartzo page. And the way that it knows is by these three kind of dashes. These are dashes. Uh, and here you can just enter some general information about your page, uh, like title, and then you can enter, you know, demo, um, demo one page, let's say. Excuse me, give me one second. Sorry. 
Um, Yeah, so yeah, uh, sorry about that. So now this kind of document knows, okay, I'm, I'm a quarto document uh, and you can give it some more attributes here within these dashes. So say author and author, we can say, you know, I don't know, you students. Um, we can also provide other, other attributes. You, you can look up which attributes, so they're all listed online. Uh, but you can give it a date. You can call like the, what type of page it is. If it's a, um, you know, uh, a PDF page or an HTML page. So you get to set some settings here um, that are very useful for what kind of page you you want to render and what kind of page you wanna you wanna show. Um, sorry, give me one more second. Just trying to get my notes. Okay, so, um, you know, one of the first things you want to do is start using titles. So this is very much similar to R. If you're if you're familiar with R, uh, it uses hashtags. So you know, this is we can say this is a large title, and then if you have two hashtags, it'll be kind of like a, a subtitle, and so on. Uh, three dashes. Um, then you can also just type in regular text, uh, and you can also do lists, you can do, um, tables. Uh, these are all just kind of different syntax that you can use to, to create these kind of very dynamic, uh, displays. So for example, if you want to do a table, um, this is what, a table with indentation looks like uh, this you can also do different types of kind of check marks uh, if you you know want to display check marks you can also do tables tables are a little bit more complicated uh, as well as uh, footnotes so you can do a footnote like this is a um, let's say it's, uh, something complicated you want to explain some more so we can add footnotes here and let's say this is, this is our first footnote we'll call it like this footnote number one and then of course for quarto you have to define what the footnote means so we'll give it the same name and this will be our footnote great <clears throat> Uh, in Quarto, you can also do tables, which tables look like this. Um, and these little uh, colons here determine the um, kind of the alignment of, of these text. So here, everything is aligned to the center. I'm sorry, to the left, except this default column that is not as kind of just aligned to the center. Uh, you can also change them like this. This is kind of aligned to the center. This is left. And then this one would be right, something like this. Uh, but yeah, you can play around with these settings and get different results. This all depends on, on you know, what it is that you're trying to, trying to do with your page and what it is that you're trying to display. Uh, you can also display images. So images are displayed. Actually, I can make this a little bigger. So you, there we go. Is that a little better? Okay, sorry. So you can display images like this um, and give it kind of like a text. So it'll be like a um, small image. And then we can call here. You can even call it from a URL if you want to get it from from like a a web page. Uh, so, for example, if we have this page here, this is a Perigene Falcon. It's uh, Illinois. It's an, uh, Chicago's uh, <laughs> bird, national, oh, not not national, but official bird. 
Uh, and usually these images will have image addresses uh, that you can copy. So for example, if we copy this here, we can highlight these terms here. This is kind of the JPEG, the, the image file that is living um, on the web that is then getting rendered onto this um, National Digital Library of Animals. So then we can go back here and pretty much paste that here and display it in our in our page. And then if, if we don't want to get it too big, because I saw that image was big, you can control the width of it. Uh, so 25%. So yeah. that'll render it. Uh, just a quick comment, because you know I'm thinking on on this side. Hey, what if I want to create my own image, right? Right, and and so so yeah, sure, yeah. So just remember, you can create a, a repository on GitHub, and then absolutely, you know, yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. You can even you know, in our in our folder, in our local folder, we can create a new folder even, and uh, you know, and just. And then in here, we can save our own images and refer them into our pages. So this will be, you know, I, I forget what the uh, syntax is, but it'll be something like images, you know, blah, 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 that JPEG, something like that. I, I forget what the syntax is, but uh, so then this way you can also refer to any images that you have in, in your image folder. Um, so yeah, and then lastly, you know, we want to say something, let's just say here, you know, so we can distinguish between what we did up there. Um, and then we can say something like, uh, I already pre-wrote this. Um, so you can say, you know, oops. Here we go. So I just want to write some text saying, you know, the falcon's population in Southeastern Illinois is likely not going extinct and it's slowly growing, right? So that's quite a statement to make, right? So you want to make sure that you back your facts up by somehow. Uh, so what's cool about Quarto is that, it, it and especially uh, uh, at least Visual Studio Code, is that it has this kind of visual mode. Uh, and in visual mode, it allows you to, oh, look, here's our page that, you know, it allows you to see it already rendered. And it actually allows you to uh, edit it as well. It has, you know, the same tools, but, um, you know, what I showed you is is how you can render this um, pretty uh, in, in the code, you know, in a code instead of these, these tools up here. Um, you can see here that we have our footnote, uh, and then when you click it, you it'll pop this up. Uh, we have the image here. So what I want to show you is that in these, in this um, kind of visual mode, you can insert things, and this makes it much easier. Uh, oh, sorry, my my VPN is about to kick me out. I just have to type in these security first, right? So. Okay. Um. So you can add citations actually. So if you go in here, uh, it'll pop up this web page. Uh, if you have your own bio bibliography already created, it'll show items here, but we do not, obviously. So we're going to use these other three or four tools here. This one allows you to use DOI. Uh, I think these other are more like um, all of the data repositories. And I think Crossref will let you use kind of uh, web, web pages to try to pull uh, references. But you know, I I dug around a little bit. Uh, Columbia has a great um, 
kind of web website to to search for. Oh no, it's not letting me. Sorry, it's a <laughs> the full screen is there. We go. Uh, so I found this, uh, and it says you know something about the Falcons here. Um, you know, somewhere I somewhere in here I, I saw that they're not going extinct and that their population may grow. So I said, great, this is, you know, um, peer reviewed information. Uh, what I'm interested in is this DOI number. So with this DOI, if we copy it and we bring it back here from DOI, it's in here and it gives me the page, the, the research, all the information that I need. Uh, you can see that it's added here in the bottom. So we're just gonna insert that. And now it gives you this kind of syntax, this bracket with an at, and then this this tag. Uh, it's kind of a, a reference tag. Um, once this Quarto document, as I mentioned, gets rendered into an HTML page, uh, it'll stylize this for us a little better. But for now, this is this is great. We have our citation. So let's go back to our source mode. We can see that the, the the syntax here is is the same. Um, what what Quarto is doing is that it's referring to a bibliography um, file that is giving it more information. Um, so if we go up here, we see that the computer automatically added this additional tag bibliography, and it's referring to this file called references. And you can see the file here was created once I inserted that reference. So if we open it, uh, we can see that uh, it has this at article. Uh, so it's telling us this is a, this is an article, and I think this syntax is you know very general already at this point. I think the tour, uh, uh, what you know, a lot of these kind of bibliography um, software use a similar. Uh, framework. Uh, so in this case, this is an article and it gives it a tag in which we refer to in our document. Uh, but then it also, you know, creates these additional pieces of metadata. Uh, so there's there's different ways to do this. You can add you can add articles, you can add books, uh, you know, and it'll you can open like this. Uh, or if you're not sure what it is, or if it's a website, uh, they also have like miscellaneous. So you can do miscellaneous and let's say you want to get an author in a year. Let's copy some of this stuff. Um, let's say, you know. And then we can just write. All right, so we made them. Oh, and then we have to give it a tag. So we can say like, you know, I don't know you tag, let's say. We save our references bibliography, and when we go back here, uh, we can refer it back to again. So we'll use the same kind of syntax. So we'll refer to this, and then you'll see that it's there. Uh, if you want to do multiple citations, you can just do similar like the column semicolon, and then maybe. The, Add a different one. Um, in any case, it just refers back to this bibliography uh, reference file. Uh, once you're done here, then you know you want to let's let's render it, right? Um, one way in which you could render it, or we could just you know quickly preview it here. Uh, you can, I guess, just to open this terminal. But I think, um, 
there we go. So it rendered it for us. It gave us a preview uh, and it created some other stuff here for us as well. It created this kind of reference section that we didn't even write uh, and the footnotes as well that are you know referred to above. You can see that it changed these to um, um, their respective authors and it stylized it for us in the proper way. It created these hyperlinks that you can go to um, and then everything else um, is stylized. You can also stylize this with um, another document that usually accompanies um, this Quarto document. So we can also create that one. And this one is called the YAML file. Uh, and usually in the YAML file, you can, it's like you're stylizing these these documents and the YAML file is kind of like a, uh, a general file that tells all the other Quarto documents um, how to get styled. So so you, instead of having to apply the styles in each, in each Quarto document that you're creating, uh, it applies it to all of them. So uh, it's very useful when you're doing multiple pages. And usually this is how you write it, it's underscore quarto, and then you put that YML. You can see that it changes to this different exclamation point. And then again, you could just give it, uh, you can look online, what are the attributes available for, for this type of file, YAML file. Uh, but the usual ones are these. So, you know, our project has a, a type. So we're, we're trying to create a website uh, that looks like a document. Uh, and you can execute um, Python if you want. But for today, we'll, we'll just do R. So we, we might just take this out if we need to. Uh, we give it a, a title, a name, and say, you know, I know you. Uh, and then there's different themes that you can specify as well. They're all listed online. I don't know them by the top of my head. Uh, so we can save this file as well. <clears throat> so we've already created three files, the Quarto file, the reference file, and then the YAML file, as they call it. Um, so I think now we're ready to... Um, render this and hopefully this works because sometimes Visual Studio Code is a little, <laughs> uh, a little, it sometimes it doesn't, it just gives out for some reason. Um, and I think it's because sometimes Quarto to render these pages, it, it uses Python. So you have to run the render command in Python, even though we're rendering our documents. So, um, so for example, oh, also, so this is how you would enter code. Uh, you can introduce code into these Quarto documents. Uh, you can use these, uh, these are like quotation marks, but not, not the ones on the, in, your, in your keyboard. They're on the top left, right underneath the um, escape button. Uh, so if you do two of these, three of these, and then three of these, it kind of creates this this chunk here of of um, space. You can tell it, you know, I'm gonna write in R or or whatever it is R. So if you do this, you can see that it already recognizes. Oh, this is a this is a code cell. Um, so it switches and allows it gives me this ability to run this cell. So we can do, you know, hello. If we run the cell, it's kind of loading. Let's see if we load it. There we go. So you can see that it says down here, hello world. Um, so yeah, this is, uh, and then you can continue here. And you can insert a different one here. The, the command is uh, control shift I, in, well, at least in Visual Studio Code is. Uh, It'll give you these options to um, enter different languages. Um, 
but in this case, and because my Python environment is, is acting up, I'm just going to stick to R. Um, <clears throat> and so, yeah, you can then now start to create your variables if you need to, you know, variable one, where you can start reading data, you know, like uh, if you, if you're in, in, you know, like a read a CSV or whatever function you want to do, uh, you can start doing them here. <clears throat> Once we're happy with, you know, um, you know, the end. Okay, great. So now we're happy with our, we have our code, we have tables, we have images, citations, you know, we got all kinds of stuff, titles, subtitles. Uh, so now we're happy with our code and we want to, we want to, um, render it. Um, so usually you do this on, I think you do this on Python. I'm not sure if you can do it directly in R. I'm sure you can. Um, or maybe you can do it in R. Let's see. I know that the, hmm, I think it's in R is like, like this. Quarto, quarto, render. And it's usually the same command in um, Python and R. So then we're gonna wanna go here because we wanna render this quarto document. We're just gonna copy the relative path. The relative path means relative to this project. So if we see what it it is giving us, I guess it doesn't wanna paste it. No, it does not. So we'll see what it looks like here. See, it just looks like that. Demo on the UMD. We'll just uh, save here, save here, save here, just to make sure. Um, let's see if, nope, that did not work. So what we can do is we can use Python. Um, so we can open an environment. Uh, I think it's this one. Any of these environments will will open kind of a Python base, which is kind of just opening one of these um, Python environments. Uh, you can see that um, it's activating a base, and then you can now also in in this IDE, uh, you can set uh, a Python interpreter. So you're you're telling this. Um, application, which is Visual Studio Code, hey, uh, I want you to refer to this environment when you're when you're running this code. Uh, but first, I want to know which which environment I want to go to. So if you have Conda installed, that's that's sort of another lesson. Uh, you can go here and write in. Uh, this is the, the Python command prompt. Uh, you can find out what you know, what environment you have. And I've already done this. So I have RGIS Pro. I, I usually like to use this one just because you know it's um, has Python and all these other packages installed. Um, so you can use this one if you want, or you can use other ones that you can create one or clone one. Um, so what we want to do here um, is you know Conda activate, and I think this is how you do it. Python.exe. must be without the exe no that's okay uh we'll it, try the base give the name of the environment and just activate i'm sorry say that again um you give the conda name of the environment activate so you must have created the environment right so like the base environment or the the indoor environment so like you have to give the name of the environment and then you have to run activate it will activate that particular environment so I have to type in conda first and then enter. Oh, you you're already in there. Like I, I see this. Like you have already activated base, right? So you're already there. You can get started. Oh, 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 I see. oh okay. It's already it's already started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was just trying to see if I could if I could use a different environment, but let's see if this just works. I guess. Um. And then it's our mm -hmm. 
Okay, great. So thank you, actually. Uh, so let's just see what um what our messages are here. Um, so again, we uh, called on Quarto, and this is in Python. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, we uh, call on Quarto to render this document. And so we were rendering demo one. Um, I guess these are just some processing um, statements. Um, I guess it's just telling you what it's using, um, what kind of packages it's using, and some of the settings that are probably default, uh, but that are are just set here. Um, and as well as some of the metadata that we introduced in our YAML uh, document. So you see that it says created docs demo1.html. So if you go back to our pages here, uh, it created a new folder. And we see here that it has a demo1 and an index page. Uh, so this index page and this demo1 are the are the files that um, GitHub will refer to when showing these web pages. Um, then we have a source control here. This is where uh, you can see how your local uh, folders are talking to or are synced with the GitHub pages. Um, so just before we do that, let's see how the files look like in, in, in the actual file explorer. Uh, we can see we have the references here, the readme. Um, we have a license file, a quarto, and then again, these folders that we created, the index file, the demo file, uh, and then some other files that were generated. Then if you if you want to, you know, in Visual Studio Code, you can also save uh, this as a workspace just so you can come back to your settings and, and come back to uh, where you left off. Uh, so you can save as a workspace here. Um, I'm going to save it in my demo. Just call like this is the syntax. The, the extension for it is that code workspace. I'm just going to save it as demo one workspace, save it there. Um, but I don't want this, this is just for my computer. So I don't want this to go into GitHub. It's one way in which you can tell uh, the GitHub or, or the computer which ones, which files you want to upload uh, is by using a, a command called git ignore. Uh, so the one that I didn't want to, and you can see that it's here. Um, and here's the demo workspace file that I just created. So I'm going to right click that one and tell it to add it to the git ignore. Once added to the git ignore, you'll see that it disappears from here and in the git ignore file, it's it's added here. So it still lives, it still exists in my computer, but it's not going to upload it to GitHub if it's listed here. And you can do that with any file uh, that is that is listed here. Uh, it also created all these JavaScript files, which I assume are just, you know, for for you to render the, the pages and, and for the pages to, to interact with each other. Um, so I think I'm just going to leave them there just, just in case. Um, and what we're going to do finally is since we're signed into our GitHub as, as we cloned our um, repository, obviously you have to have permissions and, and I think you can log in through here. I'm logged in. Uh, so this this here is where you can sign in for to GitHub in this ID. So once you're once you're logged in and since I created my own repo and and I know I have privileges to 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 make edits, I'll go ahead. Um, but usually you know you have to either create your own and sign in with that same uh, username or get permission and get added as, a, as an admin or as a contributor. Um, and then when you're uploading to GitHub, it always asks you to um, enter a message just to keep track of these updates that you do. So we'll just call it demo one um, update one. 
let's say. Uh, I usually always go here. Uh, you can commit your um, uh, your changes, your edits that you've made. Uh, but usually, if you're you know confident that what you did is is good and you want to you know push it into GitHub, then you can just click commit and push. Um, maybe Drupal has more information on what the differences are and what commit is versus push versus sync. I'm, I'm not too familiar with that, um, but what I do know is that commit and push will uh, push all of these changes into GitHub. So we'll wait a little bit and you'll see that now we're, everything's gone. It's in GitHub, it's synced. So anytime you open this again, you always wanna just uh, you know sync with your GitHub or refresh. I think it's here. And when you click here in the sync button, you know just remember to sync. So then that your the files that you have on um, online match the ones that you have uh, in your computer. Um, so all the files are still here, but now we can go back to GitHub and see what that looks like. So we can refresh this page here. Uh, we can see that our references, our demo, our Quarto file, everything that we created is here, including the docs file. <clears throat> um, these are our render pages here and all the JSON files that we talked about. Um, great, so now this is still only a repo. You haven't created any GitHub pages yet. You just have to change a few settings uh, for it to to become, to render these pages. You know, right now it's just a traditional repo um, with no ability to render these pages yet. <clears throat> but we do have the files ready. So all you have to do is go to the settings in your um, repo, and then there's a pages here, let me just make this a little bigger. There we go. Uh, pages here in the left. Uh, so this is all talks about GitHub pages and, and deploying these render documents. Um, so if you go here, we're going to deploy from a branch because we create we created our branch and we, we are adding our own documents. Uh, and the branch we're using is the main one um, because we didn't create any other um, branches or anything that we can talk about that later. Maybe Drupal can, can explain a little bit of how branches work. Um, <clears throat> and then, as I mentioned, those documents that were rendered went to the documents uh, folder. So we wanna make sure we refer to that folder. Um, other than that, I think we can click save. Um, and then it takes a little, uh, takes a little, like maybe a minute or two for, for the pages to get deployed. Uh, so we'll just give it a minute here. I don't think we have to change anything else here. Uh, so good opportunity to ask if anybody has any questions so far. I just, I just had a quick comment. Great stuff, Juan. Uh, I'm really enjoying this. Um, so is there like a, a, a Quarto file that has all the different tags? You, know, you were showing us some of them, like, hey, you want to do this, you do this. Is there like some example out there that says, hey, guys, uh, you just you know, open this up on, on, on your Visual Studio, and it has every yeah. every tag or a site, right? Even a site that says, hey, this is all the there tags that you can use. Yes, absolutely. Um, here, let me show you. There's. I'll paste it too, and I'll, and I'll share the screen with you. Um, there's Quarto has its own web page um, that is pretty useful. So, uh, and you know, it even gave, gives you the steps and which IDE you want to use, uh, what kind of platform. So it it guides you into into first installing it. Um, but then it also gives you this kind of guide that I'll put it on a, and here on the left, you can see that, you know, they have 
uh, tutorials on, on, on which one you want to choose. So, you know, if you go to VS code, it'll tell you, uh, this is how you install it. It's, it's quite comprehensive instructions in, in how to install this, um, Quarto, um, software. I think there is an install you have to do, like you have to download something, uh, but maybe kit can, uh, if he still remembers <laughs> how he installed it, but I think it's a quick install, like anything else you can install. Uh, and then there's a another one tutorial, which gives you more of the commands, uh, which is this guide. Um, if we go to authoring, you know, markdown basics, uh, it tells you how to do italics, how to do bold, uh, if you need subscript, so, you know, it just tells you all the kinds of commands that you have. So this is where I actually came right before our, our meeting and referred to this to, to try to get some of the examples. And, and there's, there's tons of them, uh, especially when you start getting into the figures and the tables, like the, you know, the figures are also, or, or the graphs, you know, it's, yeah, <clears throat> it's very robust and you can do a lot of things with it. But so I'm just showing you, um, the workflow that we did to publish the pages and just an, an easy example on how to at least get something up online. Um, just just sorry. wanted to, yeah, good stuff, right? And I'm, I'm sure a lot of uh, the people who are here, uh, not everybody, but a lot of you guys are wondering, what do I need to know this, right? That's, that's like, that's a big question. And I know, I know why, but I want to let Juan sort of say, hey, uh, we, you need to know this because, so I'll let you expand on that one, or you want me to do it, I can do it, but you know, I'll, I'll probably uh, prefer that you do it. Um, I, I, I think I made a little uh, <laughs> a clue here, but I mean, I can see many uses for, for this, you know, uh, for example, if you want to do your own resume, and you want to put it online and, and want to have an ability to to you know instead of giving people uh your your linkedin page you can have your own personal linkedin um you know when we're talking about data science you know you can have a, a cv or or some of your examples kind of like um or, or you know kind of like how a, a portfolio or of some sorts um, and then of course for this, for this, um, project, uh, this is how we essentially publish all of our, uh, documents. And so if, once you start contributing, uh, you'll have to go through this process to, you know, clone, uh, the, these GitHub repositories and publish and render the pages. Uh, so uh, it's a bit of a workflow, but you know, it, it's it can be very useful for for many many things. I think I don't know, if Dr. Tover, you want to add some more stuff. Um, but what we were talking, uh, it created this link for us, so we want to get that link, and just to make it a little more official, we can even add it to um, our website here. So let's see what happens. I think I know what's gonna happen, but oh great. Uh <clears throat> it's interesting because I don't even have to type in uh the rest of this um URL. I just created it last time it didn't happen. So I, I wanted to check. Um uh, so yeah, you can see now how this this is kind of what we consider a, a, a published page. Uh, so you can see that it has all of the attributes that we uh, included. Um, something about the Falcon. We have our footnote here that when you hover. So it, it gives you a lot of capabilities to do a lot of different stuff. Um, you can do like side, side, uh, side notes, footnotes, images, um, these kind of citations as we as we did. Uh, so this is what we look like. And then in the YAML page, you can you can have much more um, customization in terms of what kind of 
um, menu you want to add or what kind of, you know, much more customization. Um, I'm still learning. So uh, as, I, as I learn more, I'll, I'll share with you. But um, <clears throat> let me just show you, you know, what ours look like. Now that you know this, let's see some similarities. Um, so you can see here, we have readme files, uh, the Quarto YAML file. We have an index file as well. And then we have several Quarto documents and everything else is pretty much the same. Uh, the same license. Um, these are, you know, sub one hashtag, <laughs> zero hashtags, uh, you know, some of the same uh, components that I showed you uh, is exactly how we built this. Um, and if we go into the document file, we'll see that we have all of our HTML pages. So this is where they all live as well. Um, <clears throat> and then I just wanted to show you the, the YAML file because this one is a little bit more complex. Obviously, I did not write this. Uh, you know, we had some of our partners for this project contribute to this. Uh, and you can see that, you know, you can in, include uh, styling CSS, styling documents. So these are getting drawn directly from a different repo and applied to this repo. Um, there's other kind of stylings, like where do you want the, the content to go? What kind of uh, background? And, and you can, you know, you can get really complex here. This is a this is a menu, a drop down menu with lessons, and so all of this will eventually render into these pages. Uh, so you can see that the lessons here drop down. Um, this one is not rendering correctly. I want to show you actually one that. Here we go. So when it's correctly rendered, it'll have a title like this. Um, some some lessons here, and then it'll have these. Uh, components here that you that you set in the YAML file, um, and these, you know, as I mentioned, they they get applied across the all of the uh, renders that you do. It's just that you know we have multiple people rendering different pages, uh, so different contributors, and so sometimes um, some some people's environments or uh, are not compatible, so we get some of those issues. Um, but if you're working in the same system and you're publishing on, on usually in the same system or usually it works, it's just that sometimes, uh, especially our, our computers are kind of like closed in, <laughs> are, have some issues. So um, uh, yeah, so let's just go back to um, our page here. Um, let me see the documents. Here we go. So we have some images here as well, as, as Professor Tovar mentioned, that you can use your own images and the images will be uploaded here. Uh, so if we just check one out, you can see that there's one on floods and I'm sure these may look familiar to you. So these are where they're getting housed. And then we refer to them as, as I showed you with the, with the Falcon image. Um, yeah, so this is essentially how you um, publish. And then if you want to update again, you know, you it's a similar workflow, pretty much almost the same, where if you um, update something, you know, once you save, you'll see that there's only one file here in the source control. So you'll have to then go and render the page again. Oh, sorry. Why is this looking like that? Sorry. Oh, yeah. Uh, you have to render the page for it to then also bring in <clears throat> these other updates. Uh, which is the HTML page that we want. So then we can say, you know, uh, demo one, update two, and then do the same thing, come in and push. 
once you do this, this is then updating. Uh, and we can see the update going on live if we want. Um, we might have already passed it because it's probably pretty quick. But if we go into actions, you'll see here that uh, it's still working. So it's still deploying that second uh, push that I did. Um, usually once this turns green, it it uh, it's kind of like a sign that tells you that it's already published. You can also see that here that it says pending. Once you have the check, then you know that your changes carried on through. Uh, and then you can see the render. I don't know why. Maybe I, I'd saved before before I was supposed to, but um, yeah. Real quick, I know we're running out of time. Uh, I want to make sure that, uh, you know, I know people have stuff to do, but so for the literature review for that other module that uh, Kate and Juan were talking about, you don't have to know this, by the way, right? Uh, we can set up a Google Doc and you guys are going to start working on that, right? So you don't have to say, I have to learn all this stuff because I know a few of you guys are feeling very overwhelmed with this, right? It's, it's cool stuff because the process that Juan just went over, he's actually uh, streaming, streamlining everything, right? And that's why he's using Quarto. And, and what, when he renders everything, what Quarto does, he brings all the YAML and the, uh, the Quarto document and all the, uh, the biography document to get into an HTML page setup. That's, that's, that's what that thing is doing, right? But I, I would like everybody to learn this because I think it will be, like Juan said, it will be very useful for you to know all these things. But to contribute to this project, uh, you don't have to know this, right? If you're like, man, I don't, you know, <laughs> I don't want to learn this. We, we, we've we done literature reviews using just Google Doc documents and that works just fine. We have somebody in the background, on the back end uh, who goes and renders this stuff for you. Uh, you know, it's going to render all your work. So I don't want you guys to get concerned about this. Obviously, this video will get published and you can go back and test it and do things, right? As much as you want. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, if you're interested in that literature review, uh, like Juan said, uh, reach, uh, reach back to us, right? Uh, if you're like, I'm interested, but I don't know where to start, I'll show you where to start and how to do it. So that's not a big deal, guys. Um, does that cover everything for today? I know uh, Drew, we wanted to, to hear from Drew, but uh, this just now got too interesting, right? <laughs> so we need to stick, to stick with it. Any last comments, anything? Um, yeah, I just, I just wanted to add, oh, sorry. Um, I just wanted to add that, yeah, the literature review is more, more um would be done more like through Google Docs. But you know, all of you are I know if if you're happy to learn something, I'm I'm happy to to show you again, uh, even if it's a one-on-one. -on -one. So if you want to learn this kind of stuff, uh I'm I'm happy to to do that as well. So I, as I mentioned to you last time, all of you last time, you know, it's it's also you have to decide your your kind of level of 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 engagement and, and what you think is uh would interest you in doing. Um so yeah. Yeah, Juan, I just noticed that Alex put a comment in the chat that they've created a, a Discord so that we can have, you know, a place to keep documentation about our communications, especially. Uh I know that you had set up a Slack channel for us at some point as well, but I'm not sure what, what this, the status is there. Yeah, this, the channel still set up, but it's, it's not very active. You know, we don't really, we don't really use it very much, but it's set up. You know, I, I think we should run with what you're doing, Alex, and thank you for setting that up. And, uh, 
like I was saying kind of early on, there's all of these platform options. There's like been a proliferation of more and more platforms and uh, we want to be in all of them. So <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, also, you know, I just want to thank everyone again. Uh, and, you know, looking forward to continuing to engage and uh, don't, don't be shy to reach out to any, either me or Juan or myself or Professor Tovar as questions come up and, you know, be good to be on some more of these calls together as well. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay, guys, again, any questions, you you know, it's, it's really uh, uh, good to, to include everybody in the questions because everybody, you know, if I have a question uh, and, and you know, I want to know, maybe I have that question or I didn't think about that question, right? So, Make sure you include everybody, and that way we we have that communication until we come up with a with the best way to uh, to you know to have a channel or some sort of a online mechanism to to keep this going. Yeah, so, I just want I just wanted to add that you know the 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 part that I showed you today is is kind of just the first part of it, which is like someone um, publishing something, uh, but the other piece of it, and I think is the more interesting one is when other people start contributing back to to a repo or something like that. Mm -hmm. So maybe next time when we meet, uh, Drew wouldn't mind showing us how he then could interact with the same demo uh, repo and contribute to it as a, as a separate person, you know, as a new person. Yeah, that would be a good demo to demonstrate how collaborative GitHub is. So let's uh let's plan for our next meeting and then we'll have to uh show us his side. How's that? <laughs> so good a good uh, sort of hey, we will let's let's learn more, right? I think all this stuff is very interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, let's do that. Anything else? Uh Kate, Juan, thank you so much for your time. Uh Juan, that was amazing. A lot of stuff, right? um yeah thank you sorry if i overwhelmed you but I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions yeah yeah you you don't want to send a video link hopefully once you uh you, you get it published that way everybody can go back and if they have still have questions you know you can reach out back to juan and say hey juan i was trying to do this and this is happening right juan is there to help us and also to make sure that you guys start with the process all right and uh stay tuned for our next invite for the next meeting We'll be having. I just, I just have one. I'm sorry. I just have one thing. Like, um, is anyone like free for like 15 more minutes after this one? I just want to see like you know what people are doing and like just want to take some of their opinions on like basically some suggestions that I've been working. So like I know I've been just talking to Druil and Alex about this thing, and they have given some suggestion and like what needs to be done. But like, is there anyone else like who can just wait so that I can just like go through a couple of questions that I have and like i i just want to make some notes because uh like i would like to send some revised like update to the uh, the data management plan like how we can do the whole thing what like uh one said like you know it would be much better if like other people contribute to the repository and like it, it grows from that point because it's just me not doing everything everything but like enough you know, people collaborating so but like how to empower everyone to do that so so that was like something that i I thought now, so I'm, I just wanted to take people's opinion about something. So like, maybe I can have another call after this one, but like, if anyone's available, just let me know. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy to say if, if you need me or I don't know if it's a student's only, <laughs> whatever. I know it's not, I'm a student too. Yeah, hmm. uh, like uh, we'll talk with Abchai after for 15 minutes. If you have a free time, you can join us. For example, in Discord, we have a meeting mm. room channel where we can connect to each other. Feel free to join. So you say a few minutes, uh, actually, um, how, how many minutes are those? Uh, I have a four I'm not sure. Yeah. No, I, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, no, 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 it's fine. It's fine. Like, you know, I can discuss <laughs> with like uh, everyone else and then get back to you. Like, you so. could transfer transfer the host to somebody else, whoever you stay, whoever wants to stay, one of those. I, I, yeah, I think Juan has it. So if, if Juan's uh, is, want to be able to stick around, he can stick around. 
but I, I, I gotta jump off. You guys, you know, uh, I think you, you, you're recording, right, Juan? I'll, yes. I'll come back and I'll listen to the recording, right? That's, that's the amazing thing about this. I can go back and review it. So, no big deal, guys. Uh, go ahead. Uh, I'm gonna jump off. Uh, thank you so much, everybody, for being here. Uh, stick around. I, I think what actually has to say it's pretty important. I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you. Thanks, Juan. Take care, Dr. Tor. Keep it mind. Take care. Thank you, everyone. Bye. All right. So, I'm guessing this. Okay, or are we gonna move? I mean, I'm not sure. Like, what what are we supposed to do? Like, should we have it here or like somewhere else? Uh, you guys can have it. It, it. it depends on how public or private you want it to be. Uh, so, I mean, I'm I'm fine with anything. Like, I there's I, nothing. I, it, this, this is about the the, the school we, thing only. We need you. Juan and Keith, uh, me and Axel, Axel was showing me a lot of interesting stuff uh, in our previous meeting. So I think we would like to share that with you and get your feedback and see where we could go. What do you say, Axel? Yeah, I mean, definitely. Um, just give me like one minute. And I'll quickly log in um, to my, my. So let me see. I'll share my screen. Uh, Um, just let me know if you can see my screen. Yep. Okay. So, um, so I was talking to Drill about like, um, uh, just to understand like what exactly that they have been doing and what, um, well, Doctor Toa was repeatedly saying that um, we want to make sure you know we streamline the whole process as in like, not many people work on the same documents, but like you know everyone takes the responsibility ba based on like the particular skill set. But it's not like they just take everything on their plate. But you know, it's like it's it's a collaborative effort. So like, hey, I can do this. I know how to do this. So like, you know, they can pitch in and back and forth. So for that, like, uh, I did uh, think of like something else. I mean, I have not drafted it yet. But just to see how it works and like how the whole process works, I kind of mocked um, like the same school uh, uh, UI, like the website. Uh, you can see my screen, right? Yes. yes, we can. Okay, okay. So uh, just mock the same thing, um, like using Sphinx. So it's like uh, how you have a quarter. So that's like Sphinx is the same thing, basically. So I just tried to do that, uh, but like same thing, portal, Sphinx one and same thing. So I did one thing and this is just like very basic setup just to see what we can do and what cannot be do. Um, so the one thing that uh, I showed you earlier was like adding the the GitHub um, discussion section, you know? So if we have any suggestions on about a particular page, we can just have people like sign in and they can just give comments and stuff. Like, hey, I find this is much better. Can I use this thing for my particular research? And you know, just so that like we can get more traction and like more traffic on like the work that we're doing here. And the, the whole point is to make a lot of things, the data and like um, whatever resources we are using as much accessible to all the people. That's that's the main goal. But at the same time, we don't want to like get into the nitty gritty of like, you know, designing things because that's not the point. We just want to like, like teach and like make sure we like make, we don't want to teach how to do something. We want to teach how to learn something so that they can by themselves learn and like improve upon like the knowledge that they gain. So um, so this is just like basic framework, okay? Just like what quarter does. So I add a couple of sections, like how I want things to be. I made some like random images and stuff. So just to make sure, you know, like we get people's attention and give um, credit where credit is due because this is something that happens a lot. But in like, you know, you use someone else's code and like you don't give them credits and like, you don't try in, in the spirit of open science, you say, oh, I, I'm doing open science, but you don't do anything. As in, you don't collaborate and you don't give credits to people. So, okay, how can I give credits? Okay, how I want to do that. The problem is people want to do it, but like they don't know how to do it. So how can we make sure like, you know, all the steps are easy. As you said, like, you know, we can just give the uh, the, the bibliographical uh, references. You can just create the bib text and all those uh, references here, how they have done here. So same concept. You give uh, like reference section and like the teaching is 
is the, is the same concept. Um, I chose to use Sphinx because um, it's customizable as in like, you know, if, if you want to like add any new element that we want, we can just add it uh, because I was trying to work with Porto also um, because uh, here I saw that, you know, like I, if I want to just go and like watch the video, the, I have to go to the homepage and like, you know, I'll click here and there. But if we have uh, videos of a particular module or like particular topic, we can just embed them directly itself. Like for example, hey, like, uh, how to get with start get started with GitHub? There's a link here, you know. So like we can just put it down there. So like and the people don't like shift uh, pages. So it's just like so just available for them. And uh, the thing was, uh, since we are writing code in multiple languages, we want to make sure, uh, you know, the code is first of all like and there are a couple of things like we need to have, make sure like you know there's like a code quality that is maintained. Um, not everyone is going to be an SME in a particular language, so that's that's okay. But like since we are like working together, like different people are coming from different backgrounds, so they do have their experiences. They can exchange notes. Hey, like what is this? What is that? And like someone who has working in some situations for a long time, maybe they can just draft a document and just say like this is the design guidelines that we kind of follow. I mean, it's like not, it's a contribution guide. You have like free to change things, but like if you want to like it would be much better if you follow that thing and uh, just give some credits like uh, and add some changes so coming to the code that was like okay you know what if uh, this is just an example so if you want to get started how can you get started you click here let's get up you want to create account like you know you need some nasa uh, data i mean i have still have to add some things here so you make things accessible to the people so that like there's not much clicking happening and like you know we keep the attention of the people on our content so that like, we kind of hook them in like the stuff that we do. And uh, what Druil uh, and Alex uh, in, in a previous meeting, what we said it was like to have like some kind of a survey so that we can get to know like who our audience is and what they want and like what they can contribute to and accordingly give them those tasks. But it would be like super, super difficult to like have some manual process in here. So how can we automate that process? Like how can we make people choose what they want to do but you know, just in a way that they feel comfortable. So we don't want to enforce things on people. Like, hey, you do this, you learn Python, you learn R. Like, even if they don't know anything, if they don't have inclination to it, like this, it makes no sense. But like, you know, it should be a voluntary effort. Some people just like to do some fancy stuff. Like, just they want to like show some good photos or something. They can just do the the media, like you know, the social media kind of thing. They can just do the collaboration. So like, we can have those people, but. It would be much better if we have an environment already in place as a community, which does allow to allow people to go out and spread the word. Okay, so but and at, 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 uh, in in a way that you know it gives like a warm and welcoming message all the time. So we have to be a little cunning in in this process, as in like we have to be very smart in terms of we have to hook people, but at the same time we just want to make sure you know like they understand that they're doing something for a greater good. So um, I'll make the whole thing, like, I mean, as of now, I just like made a couple of suggestions here, uh, but uh, because uh, the reason I, I chose to go with Sphinx was, uh, it's again, it's like one of the industry standards, like they use for documentation and everything. So like a lot of open source projects use it, like Quarto has also been used by a lot of open source projects. So there's like no comparison, but like the only good thing is like, you know, we can add um, like, custom code just to make sure we get things done in our particular way. Like if I want something to be done in this particular way, I can do that. Uh, so the one uh, uh, thing was like, you know, I was talking with um, um, Druvil the other day. So, so, hey, like we have a code in Python and we have code in R. So we can show the code side by side. It's the same code, but like, you know, people, so like, oh, I mean, I don't know Python, but like I know R. So like click the other tab, you'll see the code here and you just copy and just move on. So, you know, we don't want to give reason to people to, you know, just say, oh, I don't know how to do this or like there's nothing out there. We don't want to give them the reasons. So that was one. And setting up the pipeline, as you said, like in the whole GitHub pipeline, the, uh, the GitHub action pipeline, so the YAML and everything, we can incorporate the whole thing with um, the, with the, the branch rules and stuff. And, you know, make sure like people uh, who kind of have little experience, uh, like for example, if they know programming, they can do peer reviews 
but like if they if if they know some content as in like if they know like okay this is not good as a content then someone else can just go and check and like you know just do a review and like hey like this is not good go back come like you know just make some changes raise the pr again and like and merge that thing so it should be a cyclic process as in like and it shouldn't be overwhelming to the reviewers then like you give like 10 files them or 10 folders oh go and review no we don't want to do that we want to do everything systematically small small things at a time uh like continuous versioning and uh, you know releases consistently so like there should be like a prop as a, as dr uh, dr towards and like we have to have some kind of sprint so we can use github to show all those things and github does allow that like uh I'm not sure if, we, if you guys uh this uh this thing so um it on github you can so i mean i know for this one so we go here because i uh one gave me access to this thing so we have something on this project and we can just set up the whole kanban board here and like we can show okay like what we are doing and what where we are in terms of like our progress so how we are doing things what we are like what are they in the pipeline and if people have any suggestions like they can definitely tell us and we can add them we can improve on something so it's it's always going to be a community effort not like you know just one person like doing everything it should be a collaborative effort as in like we should take inputs from people all the time if it's really good definitely incorporate it if it's something like you know eh, it's not that good we can just like put it somewhere like as a dead letter queue kind of thing and then maybe pick it up later on yeah, I, I, this is awesome. Uh, I guess uh, the, the the one question I have is about like user registration and moderation. Like, in order to access this system, is it is it restricted to GitHub accounts and users, or is it open for anonymous access? Uh, this one. Yeah. Yeah, this is just for GitHub because that are uh, because the thing is like because I, I tried this with like uh, my previous websites also for the documentation. The problem is if you make it anonymous, like there's a lot of spam and there's no right, moderation. Right. Yeah, and the one thing here is like, um, we can convert this thing, uh, like uh, you get an option. So like if someone posts something or like someone starts uh, this uh, comment, we can convert it into a discussion board. So it would be like a continuous discussion, like what's happening here, like, uh, uh, like okay, so like, it's not here. Like, you know, you have to have a discussion board uh i think i have this one here so uh discussions so if you add something uh like whatever happens you know for that particular thing it gets um as a discussion so people can contribute can collaborate so they can link issues hey i thought like there's an issue on this particular page at this particular section and i want like you know i want you to just change something so it's more transparent it's not like oh i'm sending you an email at 10 o'clock uh at like at night and asking you to change something. It should be like, you know, what we ha having the conversations like, hey, there's something wrong on this page or you have not given um, the references to this particular, you have not given even credit to this particular, like, you know, image or like the source or the author, the photographer, you know, um, make sure you do that. So, or like if something, if we are, if you're miscrediting someone, so, you know, it's like, you know, no one's sending us this information. So the thing is like, we should make platform open to people in a way that, you know, it doesn't like, overwhelm them but at the same time it doesn't stop them from contributing so yeah yeah no it makes makes a lot of sense uh yeah no i think the approach this is like you know it's a redesign really uh so the the approach is to do that in a beta type fashion and then you know we'll start using it ourselves and then hopefully we get to a point where we can cut it over into a production environment yeah so, uh, so the thing was like, I, I was just like, trying, I mean, I went through, basically I was just like going through this website for like the last two weeks and this thing like, okay, what is there? And like how, uh, I mean, I'm not trying to compare Quoto with like Springs or anything because like everyone has their own merits, but um, you know, the only problem that I thought like, and there's not much of customization. And if I want to give like proper contribution, so like, for example, so I know, okay, Drool and America like gave, um, they authored the whole document and like if you see the source code there's like the big text and like the author section it's 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 all there okay that's pretty good but what if i want to see what drool has done so far okay like because like i would like to know oh my god like drool writes really good code america writes a really nice code i would write i would like to see what the guys do so 
there's no option here unless and until I just search them on LinkedIn or like if I know them. But okay, what I can do here is like I did some like this is some super super basic. So if I want to see who these people are, I mean in my case like I'm sending them an email and hey I mean I'd like this work. So this is just one thing. But maybe uh, you know in future we can just like show a pop up and like the 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 whole PID for them like yeah. the. Because uh, I know, like one was saying, like we can take the head headshots and everything for the people, and just show like a profile of that per particular person. And then, like, hey, he has done this. He has contributed this much thing to this particular tops, uh, like school project. He has done this many things. He might have got some upwards, downwards. You know, uh, I have not done the upward downwards yet. I was just looking into it, but like I, I didn't know how to do that. But like you know, we can have that kind of thing and just kind of gamify the whole situation. So like we can get more people over here and kind of a scoreboard, like, you know, just like give some yeah. like, you know, just credits, like more info and like more exposure. Like there are people who do like social medias and stuff like, hey, um, so uh, a contributor of the month, maybe, and you put it on LinkedIn. So sometimes, you know, people kind of get hyped up for that thing. And hey, I want something like, I want like 25 merges on my name. Like definitely go ahead. If they do it, like we'll post it. So, you know. And in that case, you don't have to be technological sound. You just have to be good at marketing. So, you know, anyone can do that. So we don't want to just like stop people from, hey, like if you don't know coding, you can't do it. No, we don't want to do that. We want to get promoted like as much as possible and leverage all the skills of people, what they have and use the best of their abilities, like you know, the maximum intent. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, the one question in my mind is that, you know, at, so at some point, you 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 graduate you know we're thinking about like long-term maintenance mm -hmm. something like this yeah uh, so go ahead yeah so i mean i did i did think of that one too because see the thing is i mean i wrote this thing now it's good okay we are working for this one for like six months but what happens is like hey like after six months we are like we got something new because since now we're in kind of a beta prototype phase we just have very limited data and something to work with but once we go full on production, things would change. We want to show something uh, as as uh, you like share the image. Like you know, we just we have a code, or we can have an application. So now, like the priority shift. So like you know, what we want to do should we promote this on website or should we do it on like the app? Now the thing is like if I now if I write everything and if I stop working like you know for six months we don't have any development for this particular thing because it's kind of stable already or it just serves the purpose. Even after six months, even I won't understand why I wrote something in the first place. So yeah. Everything has to be documented. So no matter what is it, like all the technologies that we're using, like it doesn't matter. Like even if it's like out there, like if you're using GitHub, we should write every single thing about GitHub. And this would be super nice opportunity for all the new people, newcomers. So, you know, because yeah. see, the thing is, I know about GitHub. Okay, that's good. What about like, the stuff that GitHub has added in the last few four years or like in the last couple of months, maybe. But like if who if someone is starting GitHub now, maybe like a couple of weeks ago, they have the latest knowledge. So they can go and say, hey, like they can fact check my existing like work. So it, it, it should always be some kind of an iterative process. And then like we should always go and like, you know, maintain the yeah, like yeah. you know, not maintain, but like you know, just make edits to our existing work. And keep the platform up to date so and that would only be happen if there are new people coming on board we don't want the old old tree staying around like and sucking out all the energy we should always give opportunity to the new people new generations to like you know do new things or much better than what we are doing right now yeah no i i, I think philosophically we're we're very much on the same page so yeah so first was like you know um because of the 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 science yeah. open science 101 the credit was that is some very important thing like we should give credits to people and every single thing matters like you know how we credit them how we contribute like why my data is important why my research is important or like why we are doing something and if i'm doing something i would like to have that thing like shown off to people but if, i don't know how to do it because i didn't do it before so maybe or like maybe i'm shy but what if i just make it like um, a passive process as in like you don't do it anything but the system automatically takes care of it or like there is a system uh, which or like there are people as a community who take care of the whole um, thing for you you know 
maybe we can have a setup like sometimes people are like shy to uh, get on call and talk like you know they, they don't want to express their idea but what if we we don't make them talk but like hey you can like give like suggestions you know or just go, go through the uh the whole thing or just like a fact check something you see if the links yeah, are working yeah. or not yeah like, every yeah. contribution matters yes absolutely again again i think you know we're very aligned and how we're, we're we're seeing it so yeah that that's something i just wanted to see and like that was like something i had like thought now i just always making notes uh for like the draft that i said like i'd be sending you so but like this is the overview and like why and how we're supposed to do uh like in a, like a couple of days like i'll try to like remap the whole thing try to add as much features as possible i might not add a lot of content because like um I would not spend more time on that because I'm not that good of a writer, but like, I would just write, like put some relative information and just like make a prototype and then sh show the whole setup, like how, how we can make the, a new document and publish the page. Because what uh, Drew Will was suggesting is like, you know, this is good, but like, how can I get started? So, so like, you know, but what if I automate the whole process? I think like you create a new document. So like what, uh, what one was saying, you know, like, you just create what he did the same thing we just create a boilerplate as a new document and people can just start working on it so the point of like the open science for us like for the school uh, thing shouldn't be into getting the nitty-gritty of like how the system work but it, the point should be how the research should happen yeah so that's the focus and i don't want to make sure oh, like my link is working or not so there would be other people to take care of it that's good but like my point is oh if i'm writing something if i'm writing a code i want to make sure my code is correct my research is proper like i'm getting proper suggestions to the particular like you know element of my work so i want fact checks i want like corrections i want like you know criticism to my work so that's important and i don't want people to get like overwhelmed with the whole process of like how i can do this so and it, it's difficult it, it kind of like it's it's difficult to get started but like once you get into it like it becomes second nature yeah yeah no absolutely i agree uh yeah actually one thing that you should also keep in mind is that you know a lot of the lessons that we're working with are using very large data sets yeah uh, and so um I'm, i've never used this uh, spanx system um but that was one of the um mm -hmm. kind of big caveats here is that you know we're working with very large data sets that we can't host on on github uh because yeah. they're you know i don't know gigabytes of data and so yeah. um i'm not sure if spank x can oh and then on top of that these Quarto documents allow us to, um, you know, render render those the the code and and render the like if we want to print uh, a map that is using yeah. this very large data set, uh, mm. can it can it get displayed? You know, uh, yeah. So uh, yeah. So for the code, um, so that is possible uh, because uh, it's something like it, it's kind of like what uh. It's code run spins, they're kind of like similar in terms of like the understanding is just like the way the syntax work that is different. But like uh, for for example, um, uh, like for example here, uh, yeah, I mean, I had written something here. So like, yeah, sure, you can show the code here and like the same concept, you can copy the code and like, you know, it's copied and everything. So the same concept, it works just fine. I'm Well, I'm not sure, I'll be honest, like I'm not sure about like how to render those maps. So I was talking with like kid about like how to use those geo pandas thing to render those maps here on like on a UI and it's the same concept like we are not going to have the data sets on the system like on GitHub or anything we'll be pulling it from the remote sources and uh, we're just loading the we're doing processing and we're just like showing the data here so like it's not going to be that like heavy it's it's always going to be a dynamic content but it's not going to be heavy but I'm not sure how to render those um, this thing um like the maps but i know we can have jupyter notebooks embedded in here so if it's possible via jupyter like you know jupyter binder collab uh, this can be shown easily so yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That's... I, oh okay because maybe it was something that like 
it had to do so like i guess my question is like how you know we have all these quarter documents already that are already in this format you know yeah is is the transfer into this this different platform like very difficult uh, or can it just bring, can we bring in those quarter documents um and yeah and this 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 kind of question of of kind of render the results of the code that you're showing is also yeah. something that you know we found very useful in these lessons mm -hmm. uh, so um yeah i'll make yeah. a note of this one but I'll, I'll let you know like you know i'll just do some yeah. testing and then i'll uh, definitely get back to sure. you yeah but because yeah, i don't no have any answer top of my head so yeah so if you if you did like uh, uh or something if you log into 2i2c i think there are some like, there's a few files that we have and, and i did see yeah them. it's a massive yeah yeah I, <laughs> I apologize this is this is great work uh i i need to drop off the call but uh you know like i mentioned i'm i'm, I'm happy to jump on a call another time to you know continue to provide feedback on this uh yeah. and it, you know, I, I think, like I say, since we're aligned so well philosophically about what we're trying to do, uh, this, like you said, Ashke, that the solution is going to change over time. Like we're in this period now where even in, over the course of a few months, technology is just advancing so rapidly. Uh, but I think if we're in, aligned in terms of principles and philosophies, then, uh, you know, you can you can make a sustainable product that way. Yeah. Uh, okay. Sorry. While you're here, I may ask just one question. Sure. Uh, actually, uh, this is a left screen. I is it yours local or it's a? Uh, yeah, this is just local. Yeah. This is just local. okay. As of now, yeah. it's still uh, there. I want to yeah. just scroll a little bit down. There's uh, like it's wet. No, just a little bit. Go up, up, up. It's gonna be an, an image. Up, up, up. Scroll up. Uh, one more. Next uh, image. And it's yeah yeah, uh, it's important uh, important questions uh, to the license. I was used uh, for example for our Discord uh, uh, like uh, image logo of tops NASA. I used uh, NASA schools, but do we allow to use a NASA original logo as here on the left? Because I believe it's uh, under the license. But like yeah, it's important. Question. Yeah, I I mean it, like, it's it's something that we would want permission for. Yeah, uh, which means no. Right? Which you know we're we're in a position to to easily get that permission, but it it's true the NASA meatball uh, is yeah. that something we'd want to make sure with that we have permission to use. Yeah, that's right. yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I pulled a fast one on this one because I already added like the credits because I thought like someone would like outsmart me, so I gave the credits already. So here you can go and you can see like it's credit by NASA and everything. So oh, you can... but the logo it's uh, under the um how to uh, the tops one is in the marketing. Like... Yeah, it's yeah. on the marketing. Here you have the tops it's what we are doing, but I mean the NASA original logo if it's possible. Yeah, it, I yeah, mean it, it, the fact of the matter is that NASA has contributed to open science, you know, they're committed to open science. So in this context, I don't th think we're facing you know very many risks. But in, in general, Alex, you're totally right to be thinking about that with data sets or in any logos. It, the diligence is to reach out and ask for permission. And yeah. then that, that, that covers your bases, even if they don't respond. Yeah, because the history of this logo, it's one of the most uh, marketing uh, logo yeah. like uh, on the popular. So that's why. Just, yeah, yeah. I, I also recall that, um, I mean, uh, at least in in the, like the CDAC websites where where we host all of the uh, data, they do have certain guidelines for the for this specific logo where where you're supposed to place it and and how you can yeah. display it. So uh, I, I will not use uh, it, but if rule you... of thumb rule of thumb would be just to keep it out unless you have permission. <laughs> yeah, uh, I will not use it, but if you in future will ask or anything, just let me know or something. Yeah, I'm happy so. to have that conversation to get the permission, <laughs> yeah. which actually, you know, the, the NASA Earth Science Data Web Unification team had, had come to me recently and wanted to highlight this work. So I think we're, you know, we're in a good position. Yeah, please. Yeah, I, I believe it will be a sole 
uh, powerful for us. And like for overall, it's the same. It's like uh, how the marketing are growing. We ask the permission if they allow to be uh, looking for new audience. It means we are uh, trying to improve. Like, Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, anyway, I'm sorry I need to drop, but uh, th thank you all again. Uh, ha have a great weekend. I look forward to talking to you soon. Thank, thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Take care.